Welcome to another AI video tutorial. Today we're looking at Google Whisk, an AI tool from Google Labs that lets you create visuals by mixing images instead of typing prompts. Instead of describing your idea with words, you simply drag and drop three images, one for the subject, one for the scene, and one for the style, and Whisk blends them into something completely new. It's fast, it's visual, and it's made especially for creatives like photographers, designers, and product artists who think in pictures rather than words. So what exactly can Whisk do? It's built for visual remixing. You can take your photo, combine it with another scene, and give it an art style, all through AI. Whisk looks at your inputs, figures out what's important in each, and generates a brand new image that captures the essence of those elements instead of just copying them. Under the hood, it uses Google's Gemini model to understand your images and Nano Banana to create the final picture. If you go to Google and search for Google Whisk, you should see the first result with the Google Labs link. Click on it and you'll get to a page like this with different tools. Some are not available in all countries, for example. I don't have access to Flow yet, but I do have access to Whisk. So let's use this button to launch Whisk. You'll need to sign in. You can use it for free if you have a Google email, and if you have a premium account, you'll get higher limits. Let's click this button, and we get an introduction about the tool. It says you can describe what you want to see, and Whisk will generate it. Click Continue. You can see we can use images for different things like subjects, scenes, or styles for inspiration. It says the results are not perfectly identical, but pretty close. So let's get started. The interface is simple, organized, and easy to use. You have this arrow here to open the sidebar where you can upload your images, and you can also collapse it. You can add a subject, a scene, and a style. This makes things much easier because before, we had to write long prompts explaining that image 1 is the subject, image 2 is the scene, and image 3 is the art style. You used to spend more time typing than generating, so Google Whisk speeds things up a lot. We can also click this button to show or hide the sidebar. Now let's do some tests to see what it can do. For the subject, you can either enter text or upload an image. Entering text means you can type a prompt to generate a subject if you don't have an image, but it's better to upload your own image if you have one. The same options are available for the scene and the style. At the top, we're in image mode, and if we click on video, we can see videos generated with VAO3, which I'll show you later. In the Favorites tab, you can see the generations you added to Favorites. Let's go back to images. In my library, you can see all your generations, images, videos, and projects. What's also super useful is the ability to choose a ratio. You can see options for square, portrait, and landscape. Then here we have the option to use a fixed seed. For example, if you have a prompt that works and you just want to make small changes, you can lock that seed and slightly adjust the prompt to keep things consistent. Most of the time, I keep this option on. The precise reference, which uses Nano Banana to keep things consistent. Without it active, it will generate prompts from your images and use those instead of the actual images, so the results will be less consistent. That can be useful sometimes if you want unique generations without using the actual image. Let's go to Subject and click on Upload Image. The first time, you'll get a notice asking you to agree that you have the rights to use the image before continuing to use the service. I'll select this man's portrait. You'll see that the AI is analyzing each image, so wait for that to finish before generating. It takes a few seconds. Be careful with this checkmark. The image is only used when that checkmark is active. Sometimes you might click on the image and accidentally deactivate it. It's easy to turn it on or off by mistake, so always double check before generating. We also have a small edit button here, and you can see that it actually generated a prompt for this image. This prompt will be used together with other images. If Nano Banana settings are off, it will only use the prompt, but since I have it on, I should also get a similar image to this man. I'll show you later how to edit it. Now, let's upload an image for the scene, the environment where we want this man to be. I'll use a beach image for this. We can generate without using any text prompt, and the AI will combine the prompts of those two images and also use them as reference. Compared with other platforms like Google Gemini where you can generate one image at a time, here you always get two images, and you can generate even more. So we got the man on the beach, two different versions, one closer and one farther away. 
To have more control, you can add a short prompt to help the AI understand your vision better, like portrait of a man on the beach. Now we generate it again and got a proper portrait of the man on the beach. Let's try a different ratio to see how it behaves, even though I noticed better results when the ratio of your uploaded images matches the generation ratio. As you can see, I can click generate multiple times up to six images at once, so it's quite fast and very useful when you're doing a lot of experimentation. In about half a minute, I got all six images. I'm not sure why it decided to change the color of the suit, maybe to match the scene better, but you can always add black suit in the prompt if you want to keep it. Now, let's add a style to change it from a photographic look to anime or another illustration style. Wait for the image to be analyzed because if you click generate before it finishes loading, it won't take that style into account. Make sure the image is active and has that check mark. Now when we generate, we should get a similar art style to that. So with only three images and a simple prompt, we got a man on the beach in the style we wanted and it's free. What more could you ask for? If we click on an image, we can view it larger and even edit it further. Let's pick another image we like. Let's say this portrait. I'll click on the edit button and give instructions here on what to change. You don't need to download and upload again like in Gemini. You can edit the image directly from the generation. So let's say this man is wearing a shirt. I'll click generate and it kept everything the same except the suit which was replaced with the shirt I asked for. Let's remove the existing style and try something else. I have here a 3D cartoon bunny. Let's see how it picks up that style. As you can see, I didn't have to add the prompt again. I can still generate with the same prompt. If we go to the edit button, we can see the prompt that the AI is using for the style image I gave it. And as you can see, it's a long and detailed prompt. The result is our man in a suit on that beach in the 3D cartoon style. I wouldn't say it's perfectly identical to our man, but it's a cartoon version anyway. The beach and the suit look similar, though faces are not always perfect. If we look at our subject, we have a field that says, describe your edits. I can write the man is wearing a white t-shirt, and when I click the arrow, it generates another two images of the man in the white t-shirt. How cool is that? With this one selected, I'll just close the window, and now it's using the man in the white t-shirt as the subject. You can always add more to the prompts, but sometimes too many instructions might confuse the AI. Now, I didn't get the man in the white t-shirt, but I'm sure we can trigger that if we add it directly in the prompt. Maybe because the style image had a bunny with no clothes, that influenced it somehow, not sure, since the second seed gave similar results. Let me add that t-shirt detail in the prompt. Okay, that seems to be working. I also noticed that if the art style is very different from the subject's art style, the face is not as consistent as if I used a photo of the man instead. You can always edit the result again. For this prompt, only one of the images followed the instructions, but with the right prompts, you can create different scenes for videos or stories. Let me delete the style, and since now both images are photos, we should get a more consistent face. And yes, now the man looks more similar to the original, just something to keep in mind. If we go to the subject tab, we have this plus sign that lets us add more subjects. Again, we have the same options for text and image. If I click Enter Text, I can generate a portrait of a woman if I want, and once it's finished generating, I can use that woman as a subject together with the man. But let's say I have my own photo. I'll repeat the steps and upload this woman in yellow. For the prompt, I'll just add that woman in the prompt and say they are taking a selfie together. If you want random prompts for experimentation, you can use this dice icon to quickly generate random ideas. The selfie result looks quite nice. Let's remove the man now and also remove the scene image. I'll upload an image with a car on the street and see what happens if I add a portrait of a woman. It seems that because I added that prompt, it only used what I mentioned. If I had generated without a prompt, it would have combined both. So let's see what happens if we add the street in the prompt. Now the woman is on the street, and there's a similar car to the one from the scene reference. Let me add another subject, this time a dress and I'll also mention the car. So basically I'll describe everything I want to see in my scene. It seems to work well, we got everything we asked for. Let's remove the car and test only the woman with the dress. Now the woman is perfectly wearing our dress, so it works great for try-on cases, especially for close-up or medium portraits. In the distance, it might mess up the face a little bit. Let's add a third subject. 
I'll add this pink purse to see if it can make the woman wear it. I'll slightly adjust the prompt, but you can try generating without prompts to see what results you get. Now we got this image, but the problem is that it added actual flowers on the dress. After I finished recording, I did another test to see what caused that. It seems the AI already knew the dress had flowers, and when I asked for flowers in the prompt, it added extra ones. So I tried again, removed the flowers part, and only left white dress, and it worked perfectly as I wanted. Sometimes you might think adding more words will help, but it can actually make things worse. Always experiment with prompts, or try generating without prompts if something doesn't work. But if it still doesn't work, and the AI gets lost with too many instructions, you can download the woman in the dress to your computer, then remove the dress and the woman from the subject, and add the new woman already wearing the right dress. Now you can try again, and it should work without a problem since it's only one instruction. You can edit further if you want. Let's say I edit this image and change the background to a street in New York. When I click Generate, I get exactly what I asked for. Now let's edit this image again and add a clown behind the woman to see if it can do it. It added the clown just like we asked, so it's quite fun to play with. I have a pro subscription and played all day without hitting a limit. I'm not sure how many images free users can generate, probably around 100 or so. Let's remove all the images and add only the style to see if we can prompt in that style. I prompted for a witch cartoon character and got a different pumpkin instead of a witch. When I was recording, I didn't understand why it didn't work, but after I finished recording, I realized that the reference image was still active. It took not only the style, but also the pumpkin itself into consideration. So I turned off precise reference, and now I was able to create the witch exactly how I wanted. Let me try with a different style. I have this fantasy skull beer mug, and for this one, it probably had a more complex prompt, so it was able to generate even with precise reference and nano banana turned on. Try experimenting with different styles and images to get various results. With the same prompt, I used a sketch as a reference and got this interesting drawing with big eyes because it recognized that the robot had big eyes. It still looks pretty cool. Next, I added this cute 3D cartoon panda, and again with the same prompt, we got a cute 3D witch. It's quite easy to make a set of icons in a similar style using a reference image. If I want, I can edit one of these results to look different. Let's make the witch older and more evil. The result is quite impressive and could work great as an avatar for Halloween. Let me remove the style and play more with the subjects. I'll use this mug again, and for the prompt, I'll replace it with a magic book. I got some interesting generations that kept a similar mood to the mug. Now, let's try something more similar to that mug, but with different items to see how much similarity we can get based on that subject. We got this interesting item that looks like it could be part of the same set for a game. Let's see what else we can do. I added the woman again and tried to get this skirt. I got an error at first, but it was only temporary. At first I thought it had something against skirts, but later it let me generate without any problem, even when I accidentally placed the skirt under scene instead of subject. It does have some limitations though. For example, I couldn't make it wear a bra. It simply didn't generate the image. Let me add another subject, like this white dog. For the prompt, I'm adding, the woman is holding the dog, and I'll also add a style image and mention it, even though it's not always needed. I think I do it by reflex. We got this nice illustration of the woman holding the dog. Because the style is different, the woman looks a little different, but the illustration still looks good. Just to compare, if I turn off precise reference and generate again based only on the prompt for those images, I get something like this. It kind of lost the palm tree from the style image. Let's turn the reference back on, and I'll keep only the woman. Let's see if I can add multiple styles, like the bunny, the panda, and a house. It seems we can only have one style image at a time, so we need to check the box on the image we want to use. We can't use multiple styles like we can with multiple subjects, but at least it's easy to switch between them. Let's try now adding this car on the street as the subject. Then I'll click on the Edit button and change the color of the car to purple. I got two images to choose from, and I'll keep this one. Next, I'll add another subject, like this man, and change the prompt to say, man sitting next to a purple car. I got one in a strange position, probably because of my wording. Instead of saying sitting, I should have said standing. Let's try that and also change the ratio to landscape. 
Now we got the man in the car, but it lost the black suit. Let's add black suit in the prompt and try again. And look at that, our man in the suit is standing next to the purple car. Let's see if we can add a different scene, maybe somewhere on a road in the mountains. It seems to work. By the way, you can have a maximum of three reference images at once. So if I add another subject while also having the scene active, it won't work. You can only use up to three images if precise reference is turned on. You can turn it off if you want to use multiple images. I tried to get a close-up of the man after it was generated, but I probably should have generated a close-up from the start to keep the face more consistent. Let's select one we like, like this one for example. I have this animate button. If you look in the top right, you can see the number of generations available for your account per month. Mine is 50 because I have pro and 1000 credits. If you have a free account, yours should say 5, so you can make 5 videos with Google Veo per month. Here we can add a prompt for what we want to happen. Let's say the man is entering the car and it starts driving. It will generate your video and it usually takes about 1 to 2 minutes. This is the result. It also has audio, but I forgot to enable it while recording. Since the video is only a few seconds long and my instruction said to open the door and drive, the AI kind of took a shortcut through the door, trying to include both actions in the short clip. But you get the idea of what it can do. Your videos will not appear in the video tab. If I look at my profile, you can see I have 980 credits left, so it consumed 20 credits for that video. Credits seem to be used only for videos, not for images for now, and you can get more credits. You should have 100 with a free account, so about 5 videos like I said. Here are a few more quick examples. I combined a man with an octopus to get a superhero-like character. For this one I placed the bunny inside a spaceship where it found the device that I added in the scene reference. In this example, the woman is wearing the red dress of another woman. I got better results when the dress was placed in the scene instead of the subject, since it tried to focus on the other woman otherwise. This way, it's not limited to one subject. I added some random leaves and was able to turn them into a dress. Notice how in the prompt I only mentioned leaves without specifying the type or color to see if it could pick them up correctly. I was also able to transform a logo into a 3D gold version. It doesn't always work perfectly, but with a few tries you can get a usable result. In this one, I changed the woman's t-shirt to a different color and added text, then placed her in a desert. Here, I have a woman holding a gun in a location similar to the one in the scene reference image. And here, the girl from the thumbnail is a warrior with a whisk. I chose the result I liked and created a video where she's chasing the viewer with the whisk, and this is the result. I'm collecting likes. Press that like button to help me escape. Thank you, AI Titans, and everyone who subscribed to the membership.